I love it when my bench looks like this. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're working on the table again and we're finally getting into the base structure and this is going to be a lot of fun because we're making all of these pieces out of a slab, several slabs, of elm. Also on top of that I now have the plans available for the table so if you want to follow along with that you can. I have all of the, the cut lists and diagrams and measurements so that you can uh, do the exact same things that I'm doing if you want to. But enough of that, let's make some wood curls. So let's start with a couple slabs of elm, actually three of them to be specific. These have been sitting in my basement and drying for the last two and a half years. About uh, two inch thick elm that's about 16 inches wide, 10 foot long. Beautiful slabs, about 75 pounds a piece. Really nice straight grain, they'll make a perfect base for the table. So I'm gonna pull out all three of them, organize them, try and figure out where I want to pull pieces out of them. And I need to cut a straight edge down either side of each of these slabs. Uh, so I'm gonna start by snapping a chalk line down along the side, trying to keep as much material as possible. And then we get to sawing. This is a process that takes a while. <laughs> I ended up doing, uh, I think it's about 15 to 18 minutes uh, per cut running all the way down the board with a good bit of stoppage in between. And I'm just following that chalk line, keeping the cut nice and straight and slowly going to town. Having this uh, straight edge running down the side will then give me a reference surface that I can mark off of to then mark out where all the pieces need to come out of these boards. Without this, measuring off the live edge uh, causes problems because the live edge ain't straight. <laughs> so once we've cut all six edges off of the three slabs, we can start doing the layout work. Now for the layout, I'm going to use the cut list and the plans to actually go through and mark out where all the pieces are. I'm going to label them all on the board so that once they're cut out, I know what they are from and I know uh, where they need to go on the table. Also, it makes sure that I have all the pieces I need because I don't want any missing. It's not a good thing to cut them all out only to realize, oops, I forgot one. And some of these I need to uh, cut across the board as opposed to just cutting down. I had to do a little bit of creative figuring to try and get all the pieces into these three slabs. But uh, in the end it all came out and there isn't too much scrap left over, so I'm fairly happy with that. And then it's on to all of the other ripping cuts. Most of these cuts are just going to be cutting down the length of the board. Although a few of them are cutting across it. You can see the four boards um, on top of the table right now, the, the long rails that will be supporting underneath the table. And I'll be switching back and forth from doing an overhand to doing a, a kneeling cut. You can see I'm trying to keep it really nice and straight. That is what is needed to not only keep a straight line, uh, but to have a cut that is 90 degrees to the face so that you're not winding all over the place. And it's very important to keep your hand in line with the saw, in line with your elbow, and if you don't, that's when things start going off astray and you start winding from place to place. So this is a good experiment to learn how to cut straight because you're going to be doing a whole lot of it. And then it's on to the next step of flattening, surfacing, and planing all these boards down to dimension. I'm going to start with a scrub plane. And usually I like going with the grain, but this was uh, causing a bit of problem because it was, it was tearing out a bit easier than I would normally expect. Uh, so I'm going to switch to going across the grain. It uh, cuts much easier and you don't have as much problem with it tearing out on you. The goal of the scrub plane is to flatten out one side of the board. This flat surface then becomes your reference that you can measure everything else off of. So I'm going to be taking it down and cleaning off all the high spots, leaving the low spots alone, and using winding sticks and straight edges to find out where exactly those high spots and low spots are. If you want to see more information on this whole process, I do have a few videos on how to dimension lumber. It makes it a lot simpler than uh, trying to cover it in one of these videos. I'll leave a link to that down below. Then we can come in with a normal bench plane and clean off all the marks left from the scrub plane. This will give us the nice, smooth, flat surface we're looking for. I'm not going for a perfectly smooth surface right now, as I'll be doing that when we actually get to the joinery. I'm just wanting to give it a flat surface so that they stack well together and you look at it and say, oh, that's flat. Once I have one surface perfectly flat, smooth, and straight, then I'm going to use a marking gauge to measure off of that edge and uh, put a mark all the way around the board. And this is what I then plane the second surface down to. Once I have the second surface done, then we can do the edge, and I want to make sure that that is square to the first edge again. I'm keeping everything referencing off that one edge. It's basically the exact same verse for all other sides, 
keep everything either square or parallel to the first side. Plane along it and go to town. The one question I know a lot of people are going to ask me is then how do you do those long boards because you have uh, four boards that are 10 foot long? Well, you do them just the exact same way except for uh, uh, they ended up being about nine inches shorter than my room is wide. So I do half of it and then I move the board over and I do the other half. Uh, you can't do the one long cut from one end to the other so you have to be a little more careful using your straight edge. But then I'll loosen everything up, slide it over and then clamp down the other side and plane off the other way. Um, it's a good way to learn to plane left-handed unless you want to come around and do it from the other side. This is definitely where having the two leg vices comes in handy. Uh, I can actually clamp it in place and work out on the end of the board even though it's cantilevered. So after working on this for an entire day, what do I have to show for myself? A whole ton of curls and a stack of lumber ready to do joinery. And that makes me happy. So there you have it. Uh, it's not a whole lot of work in that there aren't that many steps, but it's a whole lot of work. Um, I spent a little over a day ripping all of that down. It was 160 some feet worth of cuts to make. And then I spent uh, a little bit less than a day actually dimensioning this all and planing it all down to thickness. Now all the boards are longer than they need to be. Uh, that's fine because I'm going to be cutting them down and most all of them have uh, weird angles on the end that I'm going to need to put in later. So now that we have this done, we can start working on some of the joinery. So I'm really looking forward to those videos. Also, if you do want to build something like this or you like the base design, um, I have the plans available on my website. Uh, all of the sales on the website, t-shirts and card scrapers and things like that really go to help out the channel. I do want to say thank you to those of you who have purchased things on there. Patrons on Patreon, you guys really make Wood by Right what it is. Without you, this channel would not be here. So thank you for that. That's about it for today. Until next time. Have a wonderful day.